Congratulations on the award. What was your reaction when you when you found out? Oh, I was. I, 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 I thought it was a big mistake. They obviously made a mistake. Yeah, You're it's the first person to say that tonight. I, am I really? <laughs> Does everyone like that? No, I deserve it. Um, it's so lovely. I think it's lovely, you know, for anyone that does anything creative to just sort of get recognised for it. It's just a really nice thing to happen. Yeah. Let's talk about this 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 little show that you were in, which is uh, show, which has yeah. gone uh, <laughs> pretty global. Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a fantastic show. I mean, you, did you know when you were making it that it was going to be something special? No, I don't. I don't think. I, I think this is kind of always the way. Is that I don't think any of us thought it was going to kind of hit the heights of, of what it kind of did. Um, but mainly because we we thought we're making a horror show. And I don't know whether or not anyone's going to care about the, this family aspect. And it's kind of was the hook of the show, which kind of resonated with an audience. And so it was a bit, it, I mean, none of us kind of knew. We all loved being a part of it and we thought it was great, but it was just whether or not, I don't think you can kind of expect that size. But it's also, you know, Netflix is so amazing in what they put out, you know, the content that they put out, that it reaches such a global audience. So we were very lucky. I think I read somewhere, I don't know if it was someone on Twitter or some people on Twitter that said they'd vote for it as their favourite film of the year because <laughs> it was so, so good. Um, but, I mean, have they talked about follow-ups, sequels? I mean, because the audience is there. I mean, yeah, I'm sure uh, yeah, yeah. there's been discussions. There's, there's lots, lots and lots of discussions. But I will. I think there's a sniper somewhere over there from Netflix that will shoot me if I say yeah, anything. Yeah. Is that strange, though? Because that's kind of like uh, reserved for Marvel and Star Wars, and I you're know. in the same kind of ballpark in that yeah, sense as them. That's it, kind of it strange. Makes, it makes me feel like a really big wanker. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's, as you say, it's such a global audience yeah. and such a big appetite and it is with Netflix similar to these big kind of studio yeah. movies that the audience is so big I mean do you get do you, have you ever had a sense of that that you know so many people are watching this show over the over the world that might not see it otherwise uh, yeah I mean I, I think I think that's what you know like I said it's kind of why Netflix is so great because they are you know it's it's hit I think it's, it hits every single country apart from China um, and so it is it's quite nuts being a part I'd never done anything for Netflix before and so I kind of don't think I anticipated just how overwhelming it would be that like from all over the world you're kind of um, suddenly overnight you're kind of in people's living rooms and it, it's it's quite a bizarre feeling I think to get used to but it's amazing because I'm so proud of the show and I'm so proud of the work that Mike's done and everyone the whole cast so it's just so nice for it to be recognized and appreciated we spoke to you a couple of years ago at Lady Macbeth before it, at the film festival before it exploded everywhere um, congratulations on that it's a fantastic movie have you enjoyed the kind of trajectory that your career's got on since you must be delighted with what's happening it's, it's, it's quite quite big um, the, the jump has been erratic I think like most actors I think it's, it's quite erratic one second you're like not earning any money and then the next you're like I don't know in Star Wars um, so <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just enjoying the ride and um, trying to stay as calm and as grounded as possible um, and in moments like these celebrate them and have a bit of fun yeah. Um, Twitter sphere is a bus, uh, a glow that the title for Star Wars might be announced any moment now. Everyone's uh, really? apparently so. Gosh, that's going to be news to me. Is it? Is it's... I was going to say to you, is it just Episode Nine to you? Yeah, it is. I mean, I literally, I they keep everything in such a lockdown. Um, I, yeah, I, I they don't tell us anything until it's time for us to know. They are literally Disney are the ultimate Jedi's. They're just like work in the room they're crazy i love it it's a, i mean it's a massive project it's obviously probably, might be the biggest movie one of the movies of the year we spoke to richard e grant recently and he was like a child he was so excited he was just so so excited was it the same for you oh yeah it's like something that i didn't i, I haven't fully anticipated so I, I don't know how to get my head around it on a lot of occasions and right now it's fine because i'm filming so it's okay but um as soon as i have to go into the public and do all of this but with Star Wars as like right behind me I think I'll be a little bit more terrified. You go Star Wars to Game of Thrones which is I mean a bit greedy let's be honest. It's really greedy I know I'm angry at myself and I don't know how to stop it um, I'm a little bit just keep going is that the thing enjoy the ride I mean might as well. Congratulations on the award uh, what was your reaction when you found out? I was very flattered yeah it's a great thing isn't it so uh, very appreciative, very classic. 
Uh, we, were, we were just discussing this a second ago. Have you seen the sex education cast watching and playing and reacting to Bandersnatch? No, I haven't. No, no, I haven't seen that. They put this highlights reel together, apparently, of them, all the cast, because obviously Netflix okay, Neighbours or something. Right, okay. Uh, they're playing it and reacting it. I mean, I just wondered the if cast you, of if sex you education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's that on? Where can I watch that? On YouTube. On, on the Netflix YouTube account. Okay, okay, interesting. I haven't seen it, no. I mean, I know you were involved in this particular episode, but ne I was just talking to Oliver from Haunting uh, on Hill, ha Hill House, wherever it's called. <laughs> Sex Education, sorry, I'm completely losing my... It's such a big platform. I mean, were you prepared for the fact that the audience is just so big and there's so many people in so many countries that maybe wouldn't have seen this that are now being able to discover it? Um, I... Sorry, I just got totally distracted by this pom-pom that just appeared out of nowhere. Um... I'm. Uh, I was definitely quite uh, overwhelmed. I think it, it's, it's like, like you say, it's such a huge platform and it has such a big reach. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was great. I had a good time. Uh, just what, another thing I wanted to ask you, and this is this is all rumours. There's obviously there's this new Batman film coming out, and they are going younger. And so there's this list of people, and I think you might have been on one of those lists. I mean, what, what what's your reaction when you hear something like that? I mean, is that a character that you would ever Bruce Wayne Batman? Do you ever kind of contemplate or go for? Uh, I've never thought about it, to be honest. That's news to me. I had no idea. I think it's these fan things, because you might be Robert Pattinson, and then older people like Oscar Isaac and Michael Fassbender, but they might be going younger, so obviously people make these lists. Mm. I think you won one of these lists, but okay. if it came up, I mean, is that a character that you could maybe see yourself playing, Bruce Wayne and Batman? I mean, don't rule anything out, I suppose. Um, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's very flattering, whoever wrote the list. I don't know who it was, though. Who wrote the list? Do you know? It's just, I saw it on the internet. I couldn't tell oh, you who. It's, it's an like. intellect list. Yeah, maybe. Oh, right, yeah. But you're in the mix. There's lots of different oh, people. Yeah, you never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Stay, by, stay by your phone, I would say. <laughs> in case the person that wrote that list calls me. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And says, I think you should be Batman. Right. Uh, just, uh, I mean, in terms of you, I mean, what's, what's next for you? What projects have you got co coming up? Uh, not a lot. I mean, I've got uh, a film I did a couple of years ago. We filmed a couple of years ago um, called Roads, directed by Sebastian Schipper and uh, with Stefan Back, uh, starring alongside Stefan Back. That'll be coming out uh, this summer. Congratulations on Les Mis. Uh, massive, massive success. You must be delighted that it's been embraced by such a big audience. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I kind of like, I'm really happy if it has and I'm really happy. Um, we had such a great time shooting it, so yeah. How was it playing uh, Cosette? Because it's, it's quite a challenging role in, in many regards. Yeah, I think it, she's such an interesting character because she's had such a sheltered life. So it was kind of finding, you know, deciding how so someone is when they've spent so long at a convent without kind of outside presence of um, society. So um, I think that was an interesting thing. And also kind of the abuse that she'd gone through as a child that no one should ever have to go through and about her dealing with that later in life. And have you, have you enjoyed uh, kind of d dipping from the UK to the US? Obviously, I know you were in Nocturnal Animals, which was fantastic. Are you enjoying kind of doing, doing both, doing the UK stuff and the US stuff? I love, stuff? It. I love California, um, and, but I love London, obviously, because London's my home, so, yeah. Uh, congratulations on Ready Player One. Uh, fantastic. I remember you talking to us then about Ant-Man. You couldn't say anything. Now it's out there. Congratulations on Ghost. How was it to, to see the character embraced by so many people? Because it was a fantastic performance, I have to say. It was, it was an absolute honour to see it embraced by people because also, like, the character, she's misunderstood. She really was, you know, she's not... I guess, you know, the beginning, it's like, ooh, Ghost, the villain. Um, but, you know, she's an antagonist and actually feel sorry for her and it was amazing to play and kind of delve deep into that character and, and kind of actually kind of make the audience go between Ant-Man and Ghost and go, hang on a minute, I kind of understand her pain. She's in pain. Um, so no, that was fun. And also just putting on that suit every day. It was hot. It was boiling hot in Atlanta, but it was badass. So it was worth it. Did, uh, I presume the guys told you what was going to happen with Infinity War and the snap and everything else. I mean, were you aware that Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Douglas and all those guys were going to be gone going into the next one? I actually wasn't aware of that bit. Okay. I didn't know about that bit. So I was amazingly surprised at the end um, and I went oh my goodness oh my goodness poor guys they're all in like you know and man's in there trying to help me because he kept his promise you know Hank kept his promise to uh, get you know the quantum energy for Ghost and uh, yeah we'll see what happens there yeah. do you know any future about what might happen do you think obviously you know a lot of people were saying people characters off camera may or may not have survived Thanos is snap at the end I don't know I mean what do you think well, I, can't I, mean, think. 
I know, but there's so many theories. It could be anything. So many theories. I uh, just, just want to touch on Killjoys as well, which is still going fantastic guns. You must be delighted that you've had to do so many series of the show and be able to embrace the characters and everything. Do you know what? It's just, it was such a fun show. That was a real family, Killjoys, you know, doing five seasons and kind of really starting from the beginning, starting from scratch with the character and kind of growing up with the character and going, growing up with everybody. And that was amazing. And, you know, being our show and, and having five seasons, it really was the fans that really kept it alive as well. It really was. It was the amazing creators, the writing, the characters, the chemistry and the fans, mainly down to the fans for, you know, really investing in in the messages and, and the characters and the stakes of the story. So that was that was a real honor to, to do. Let me ask you about Doom Patrol. Uh, you're playing Cyborg, which is a fantastic. I mean, you must have been so, so excited when the call came and this project came about and that you are now playing Cyborg on TV. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was a dream come true, you know? It was like, after I did The Purge, my whole thing was like, I really want to play a superhero. And I was hoping that that would launch me into the, the rooms, essentially, to be noticed for that kind of role. And, and, and it was. And, you know, when Greg and Jeremy reached out and, and they considered me for the part, I was like, yes, please. You know, this is, it's been a dream for me. You know, shooting this project has been amazing. And the show is, is so different to anything that's been seen before. People are going to love it. And I can't wait for everyone to see it. How does he differ in the show to how he was in the in the movies? Because uh, obviously we only saw a short bit of him in the Justice League, whereas you get to play him for, I guess, eight, nine, ten episodes or something. Yeah, well, you know, we get the opportunity to really go back and see Vic Stone's uh, backstory. And also it's at a time in which is not in the same era as, you know, the Ray Fisher version in Justice League. It's a much younger cyborg. It's, you know, the start of his journey as cyborg. He, he's not got all of his elements yet. We're going to see him grow throughout the series and new gadgets and new experiences and opportunity to grow as you know, a superhero, a character, and also how you know, he deals with everything which is happening with him being half robot and being a cyborg. And we really get to spend a lot of time with the character in the series, which I'm, I'm really grateful for. The great thing as well with some of the DC properties, a lot of Arrow and Supergirl and all those guys, are getting a lot of support from the channel and they're getting a lot of series and everything. I mean, it must be great to be with a show that might continue for, for many, many series. You might get to, to kind of grow with the series as well. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's the biggest thing. And even it's really exciting, that, you know, the prospect of Titans too and being able to, you know, take this character and, and play in this new DC Universe world. I have no idea, you know, what crossovers they're going to do and when or whatever it is, but just the premise of that being able to happen is, is phenomenal and I can't wait. Last time I spoke to you was Killing of a Sacred Deer, which it was a while ago then, but in the, in the interim, Vox Lux, which I still haven't seen, I really, really want to see. How was that experience, Natalie Portman, Jude Law, uh, Brady Corbett? I mean, that must have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was amazing. I had such a good time doing that. Um, and like you say, getting to work with those people, I learned so much on that. Um, and I'm so happy that like at this age, I got to you know be around those kind of people because I'm at the point where I'm learning from people constantly. Uh, so yeah, learn from the best. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine for a young actress, as you say, learning from people, obviously, you know, people like Nicole Kidman, George Clooney. I yeah. mean, you've been quite lucky. You must be very appreciative that you've been able to draw off of their experiences going forward in your career. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, it's not specifically them, you know, telling me, oh, it's beneficial to do this or anything. But I think just watching their behavior on set around people, the way that they treat people, um, it's like one of the most important life lessons that you can have there. Uh, and yeah, no matter who you are. I mean, what's next for, for you? Where, where are you going after Vox Lux? Have you got exciting projects on the horizon? Um, I do am actually shooting something at the moment. Um, it's shooting an island. Uh, and I'm really, really excited about this one. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. And are you someone as a young actress that you're drawn to any of the sort of the, the, the bigger movies, you know, the Marvels and the DCs? I mean, if the opportunity came along, would you kind of grab it with two hands? Yeah, 100%. I mean, at the moment, I've been doing quite like strange, cool, weird ones. Um, I guess they're the ones with interesting script, but you know, if a Marvel film came along with an interesting script and they said that they would want me, I definitely would not turn it down. Actor of distinction, uh, how did you uh, take that news? Well, uh, with a pinch of salt. Um, no, I was, I look, I'm very flattered, you know, I mean, God. And I always remember years ago, when I was about 18, Dustin Hoffman was interviewed on the radio and they said, I remembered it, they said, are awards important to you? And he said, well, when you're an actor, he said, you know, you want an award for just getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth, you know, you think you should have an award. So um, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. You've had a, a great year, obviously, Swimming with Men, fantastic achievement. Obviously, you're in Holmes and Watson as well. And a new film that you're in just premiered at Sundance. <laughs> 
Yeah. I won't go there. That's that. But uh, blinding by the light, which you're in. Watson, Holmes and Watson. I had the best time making. You know, when you when you're an actor, you have there are two sides. There, there's the making of the thing, and then there's how it's received, and they often don't match. Now, Holmes and Watson one of the most enjoyable times I've had. So I've got nothing but uh, good memories. The new one that's coming out is uh, Blinded by the Light. Now that's fantastic. I saw that just before it played at Sundance and I was blown away and then, and I was thinking, well, maybe it's just me. But no, it got a five minute standing ovation at Sundance. It's a wonderful film. I mean, I'm a tiny little thing in it, but it is fantastic. I think we saw, uh, I think I thought a clip of it at the E1 presentation and a very very short clip but that's fantastic and then also more trip down the line yeah, we're, um, going, we're going to Greece Steve and I to do a trip to Greece uh, we're doing that this summer so that'll be out pretty soon I imagine you still went for the call for the I remember last time I spoke to you went for the superhero call uh, Batman's available now is Batman available now? Yeah. oh well all right well I will stand a bit taller then <laughs> so I think I'm just too short I just think there's no I'm too old but other than that am I an Alfred though not that old <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on your 10 Brits to watch. You must be delighted. Were you shocked when it happened? Uh, I was, yeah, because I think that um, a lot of this job is sort of plugging away and hoping people notice. And part of the hoping people notice is just getting jobs. So when people actually are like, no, we notice, we see that things are happening and, and we're excited for you and excited about your career, it's definitely a surprise and very nice. It must be quite exciting to be you now because you've got a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, Killing Eve was a massive success. You worked with uh, Bill Hader on Barry as well. And I think you're in Veronica Mars, potentially. It must be great to be you right now. I, I hope so. It feels great. It feels lovely and we're all here and I'm back home and the, the weather's been nice. So yeah, it does feel good to be real right now. And there's a lot of exciting stuff happening and I'm really lucky that I'm part of shows that people really connect to. Whereas obviously Veronica Mars has been a show that's kind of, it's a cult favorite. And so I think it's lovely to be, all the shows I'm on and doing, it feels like people are really get engaged with them, with the characters and with the storylines and all like that. So yeah. I did a little IMDb search just now, and you might be working with Mr. Paul Feig. Is that is that something that might be happening? I did a a, a pilot with Paul Feig, but that is something that um, that we already worked together on, and we're yet to see what happens. But yes, I did work with him, and that was unbelievable. He's incredible. He's a, I've met him. He's so sharply dressed and He's so the so wonderful. He's most dapper man you've <laughs> ever met. He's also a wonderful director who's so generous and has done so much and knows so much, but is still not afraid to be like, well, you try it, and let's just see what you do and yeah, he's someone whose style of directing I would very much like to emulate should I go on, on along that path. Yeah. Just finally, I just want to ask you uh, specifically about Killing Leave. I mean, it's had such great success on awards and everything else for Sandra Rowe and everything else. I mean, were you, did, you, did you have a feeling in your gut that it was going to be something special when you were making it or were you just hopeful that someone would, some people would watch um, it? I knew for a fact that it was a wonderful script but I think there's so much TV which that we're so saturated and that's also a good thing because a lot of voices are being able to come through that I didn't necessarily know it would make the splash like there are so many shows that I've watched that I think are brilliant but not many people like I watch baskets and I think that's a work of art it's genius but not necessarily people haven't necessarily watched it and so I didn't know I knew it was a wonderful script and I knew that everyone involved was wonderful and Phoebe Waller-Bridge is incredible I w I'd watched Fleabag I didn't know it'd make the splash it had made like both here and in the US which is lovely um, it's the first thing my mum's ever watched me in even though I've been doing this for over 10 years um, but it's nice it's not it's actually it's actually even nicer that way because I went you go into it with very pure intentions of just going I really like this script I really like this character I really like the creative team and then everything else is just the cherry on top congratulations on your award uh, 10 Brits to watch uh, well you must be you must be delighted when you heard the news yeah, it's an amazing it's an amazing um, privilege to be uh, recognized in that way you just have to look at I mean, all the other people here are amazing, you know, and like, yeah, it's a real, it's a real honor. Jess Swale directed me when I was at drama school, so it's not, did you? She's lovely, isn't she? But um, it's a, it's a, it's a trip to kind of like come full circle. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, I remember you were in uh, Merlin Yorick Express. That must have been a, a fantastic uh, set to be on and an amazing yeah. experience, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's, that was my first time being on like a kind of like big budget kind of like studio feature and like watching... Ken Branagh kind of like direct, produce, star all at the same time or it's kind of like inspiring. But yeah, yeah. More more of that to come hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. What, what is next for you? What have you what, what's on the horizon? I'm shooting I'm shooting a sky 
HBO thing at the moment called Gangs of London. Okay. Yeah, so we just started shooting that a couple of months ago and going to be shooting that over the next six months. That's a fantastic platform, Sky and HBO. I mean, that's a, that's a big double bill. A lot of people will see that. Are you ready for that? Of course I'm ready for it. Are they ready for it? <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's um, the question. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a really exciting project and hopefully, hopefully it'll be well, well received. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many big projects out there. I mean, are you someone that if the call came for a Marvel or a, or a DC or one of those kind of big superhero movies that you'd, you'd grab it with both hands? Um, I think I think like all of us are out here just trying to do good work really and we want to do work that challenges us and challenges the audiences that are in, in interact with it, you know. So like anything that's good I, 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 I wanna kinda like learn from and kind of like lend my skills to really. So I wouldn't say no to anything as long as it's it, it's of the right kind of like quality. I mean, I've, I've asked a few people this, but uh, BAFTA's on the weekend. Are there any films in the in the mix that you've really enjoyed this year? Uh, I'm going to see if Bill Street could talk tomorrow night. Actually, I'm so, I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to a screening with Barry Jenkins and Gina King. Oh, well, I just finished reading the book, and the book is beautiful. You know, James Baldwin is my favourite my favourite writer, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how it kind of like translates, uh, how it translates really. Yeah. But um, what are the other big what are the other big ones? Uh, it was like the favourite. Yeah, oh, I love nice. that. I love the favourite. I think the favourite's amazing. Great, the, all three of those performances from Rachel Weisz, Olivia Colman, and Emma Stone are like those. Those are some of the best performances you're going to see yeah, in a film in a long time. So yeah, I absolutely love that film actually. So it's hard to for awards. It's hard to decipher who should be best actress because all like so so good. And then it, give, it, give it, give it, give it them all. I say ensemble, they should all right? take it. Yeah, Not ensemble. They should all individually one, get best actress. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, congratulations on your award and the Newport Beach. Yeah. How, what was your reaction to that? Well, I was a bit taken aback. I, I, I haven't thought of myself as an icon before tonight, but you know, better an icon than the opposite. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and I have to ask you about Downton Abbey. Everyone is super excited for the movie. I think the teaser trailer was watched X amount of times on YouTube by everybody. I mean, how excited are you to, to go back and to showcase kind of a, a different aspect of like in a movie? I am, I am very excited by it, and particularly now, because it's just been arranged that I will see the first assemblage of the film next week Fantastic. and I haven't I, I deliberately haven't looked at any cut film I saw the rushes but but uh, I didn't want to see bits and bobs and assembled scenes and things. I wanted to wait until there was a complete assembly and and now I'm seeing it next week so that is you know very exciting Fantastic. in terms of the I mean I probably won't tell us anything about the plot but is it does it is it a continuation in terms of time or is there a time jump or no it's kind of a continuation um, yes, I mean a continuation from the end of the series. I think there probably is a slight time jump, but only sort of months, not not ten years or anything. Yeah. And for you yourself, I mean, you're always very busy, I'm sure. Have you got anything else on the on the horizon that you're working on? Exciting? Yes, I, I have. I've got a series based on my novel Belgravia, which is going for ITV, and that films in the spring, and then a series about football in the 1870s which is going for Netflix and that shoots in the spring and then an American series which were um, I'm writing at the moment so you know enough to be going on with well, as a football fan that sounds very very exciting oh, to me I don't know glad. bits of history I'm sure lots of people would enjoy that and now we've been looking for actors who enjoy play and play football because they've got to look convincing and so that's been quite interesting but actually there's quite a lot of them Congratulations on your uh, ten, 10 Brits to watch. Thank you. What was your reaction when you found out? Well, it, I was just delighted to be on the list because I think quite often, um, you know, actors are normally on the front line and so to be a director and a writer, and particularly in a year that, you know, women are sort of making a bit more of a statement, I think. I was really proud to be part of that. So yeah. it's a really exciting time to be uh, in the industry. In terms of that, I know you're directing a movie with uh, Gemma Arterton and Guggen right. Raw. Yeah. Uh, that must be very, very exciting. And uh, how's that? How's that all going? Well, we're in the edit at the moment, so we've done the uh, the sort of the, it, it was it's set on the cliffs in the south of England. So we had a summer of glorious weather, and now we're in a very dark, very small room for months at a time. Um, but it's just it's lovely, and and because I wrote the screenplay, to be able to tell a story from the very beginning, the sort of kernel where you think of it, you know. Just, it's just an idea, and now it's a fully fledged film on a cinema screen. It's a, it's a journey like no other, I think. Yeah, and actually, I really have BAFTA 
to thank for that because uh, I wrote it on a bursary scheme okay. um, where they were looking for playwrights who they thought should be writing in film and so actually it's really not without organisations like that giving people an opportunity that uh, you know, I wouldn't have written it otherwise so thanks. <laughs> I mean, in terms of the film itself, I mean, are you looking for, uh, are you going to be looking to release it on sort of a festival platform first before cinema or? Yeah, I think we're um, hoping for festivals later this year. Um, like I said, we're still in the edits, so we're sort of, my head is full of the cut and how we're going to put it all together. But thankfully, we've got an excellent team working on it. Lionsgate are um, our UK di distributors and so we've got some lovely, and the BFI has been tremendously supportive and we're one of the films that they um, gave a big wadge of money to last year. And it's nice as a first time director to be trusted with that. So yeah. Maybe London Film Festival then, if it's the BFI. Maybe that London would be quite a good one. That would be quite a good one. Uh, just one other thing I wanted to ask you about. You're the writer of the Horrible Histories movie, I believe. Yes. How was that experience, bringing oh, that to the screen? Just completely mad. It's It's such a joyful um, group of people and a uh, project because people love it and to be able to make something that's educational and fun and silly and kind of act like a kid when you're writing it and think well what would have made me laugh when I was small and then you show it to people and actually adults love that just as much as kids do it's you know it's, it's a really um, it was a, a huge sort of honor to be asked to do it so I was delighted Congratulations on the Thank award you. for this. Uh, what was your reaction when you when you found out? I was uh, I was furious that it wasn't it didn't require going to Newport Beach. But apart from that, uh, thrilled. Really lovely. Really lovely of them. Um, and it kind of you know come Sunday, even if we don't win on Sunday, we won something. We had, this, we had the same reaction to you about Newport. We thought, yeah, we're going to a carpet in Newport Beach, but here we are in the cold England. Um, yeah, congratulations on Stan and Ollie. We just spoke to John. Amazing success. Congratulations on the BAFTA nomination and everything. Uh, how delighted are you that the audiences have come in their droves in the UK? I mean, it's been such a great success for you. Uh, I mean, in, in, it, really, it's, it's been um, a, 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 a wonderful journey for us because I started out uh, on, the, on this project from a position of loving the guys from, from a little boy. So to see, um, I mean, there, was a, there were a couple of weeks when it kind of took over. There were Evening Standard newspaper vendors with bowler hat t-shirts and uh, it just, it, Lauren Hardy kind of swept through for a couple of weeks and it was lovely to see and it's lovely to see people rediscovering how brilliant they are and the, the magic of their films. So it's been, it's, been a, it's been a great time and it's been a, a great vindication of all the time and effort that we put in. I mean, uh, the movie obviously has had great success and you've had BAFTA nominations, but there's, there's so much, um, uh, so many amazing films out. I mean, at the BAFTAs, so many, so many movies. I mean, are you just delighted that you're kind of in such good company, I guess? Yeah, I mean, we'd love to win on Sunday. I don't know if we will, um, but it has been, um, it's been a very good year for uh, British movies and it's just great to be counted amongst that number. Um, it's funny, you know, I, 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 you just sort of, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's something about the fact that the, the world is more unpleasant uh, as each year seems to go by, but somehow we just seem ready for two, two innocent souls who loved each other and who just wanted to make you laugh. So maybe there's something going on in the air with, with, with that. And for you, I mean, have you got some, what's your next project? Have you got anything lined up that you're working on right now? I'm working with Steve on a, on a film about uh, a, a woman who discovered the body of Richard III under a car park in Leicester, which is a true story. It's a very exciting project. It, yeah, well, it's it is. It's been, we've been on it for a long, long time, but it's um, yeah, she was, it was she'd been missing for over 500 years, and as I say, a, a housewife from Edinburgh found him under a car park in Leicester. Now that's a great tease, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it's true tease. story. Congratulations on uh, Stan and Ollie, Thank you. which has been a fantastic success in the UK. I mean, you must be delighted that so many people have, have embraced the film and everything with it. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased. I mean. Uh, we, we thought it would have a decent market here, but we didn't realise how much love it was going to get, you know. And um, we're really happy it's crossed, you know, generations as well as, uh, as you know, as, as it's a male and female film, you know. It's, we've been very surprised with how well people have come out to see it, you know, but very happy, I have to say.
And Steve's been nominated for a BAFTA, I believe, as well, which is, I think it's Steve that's been nominated, which is, which is fantastic as well. I mean, the film's getting recognised at awards season as well. It must be uh, even more appealing for you. Yeah, I've got nominated for a BAFTA too. I yeah. beg your pardon. Yes, you have. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, no, Steve, 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 got, Steve got Best Actor and himself, Faye and, uh, and Jeff were in for, a, you know, the Best British Film. And then our makeup guys as well got a nomination too. So we got three in total, so we're very happy with that, yeah. Fantastic. And obviously you understand, Ollie, you've done some TV stuff before. Are you enjoying kind of bouncing between, between the two or is movies where you want to be in the future? It depends what the TV project is, but, you know, I prefer movies, I have to say. Um, but, you know, I've done stuff as, as varied as filth, Stan and all the, you know, episodes of uh, comedy for Channel 4. I've done, I've done done all sorts of stuff, and, and I just like to turn my hand to different things, you know. So whatever, if it's a good script, I'll consider it, yeah. yeah so congratulations on your award this evening. What was your reaction when you found out that you'd, that you'd won this one? Uh, open mouth <laughs> astonishment, frankly. Um, I, uh, I was a commercials director in the late 80s and early 90s, and... It was one of those things, I wouldn't say I'm good at many things, but shooting beer ads was a thing that I, and financial services ads, I was really good at, and I won a lot of awards, as you do in advertising. Um, and then something happened in 1993, I didn't win anything for 15 years, so I, I sort of lost hope, frankly. <laughs> so, so here I am back again, and it's very, very nice. It's a really uh, an amazing honour and, and a complete surprise, of course. You know, I don't go around thinking... Oh, it's about time I won an award. I, I had long since written it off. It's a bit like I got this letter from an uh, email and it said, invitation to appear on Desert Island Discs about five years ago. And I think, this is, this is not, this can't be right. And people said, oh, will you have thought of your eight discs already? No. Why would I even consider that, that would ever happen? So, so it, it's very nice, but it's, uh, it is absolutely a, a surprise. Yeah. And I mean, looking back on your career, you're, you're involved in two of shows that I loved growing up as a kid, which were Blackadder and Not Nine O'Clock News. I mean, what's your memories of those shows and that they st how do you feel that they still have audiences <laughs> today? People are still kind of discovering them on all these Blackadder's, streaming services yeah, and everything. Blackadder is not going to go away anytime soon. And uh, people say, oh, it's so clever of you to set it in history because it doesn't date. I mean, if you look at Python, brilliant though it is, the haircuts, did they really wear those trousers? That can't be, no, they really did wear those trousers. Um, but Blackadder doesn't date, but it wasn't deliberate. It was just something we were interested in. And it is, it is nice. Richard Curtis was saying the other day, aren't we lucky that we did that? As I was going to hint at in my uh, speech later, that, um, but actually when you're in it, it's very difficult. You know, those, a lot of those shows are very frightening to make, very, very long hours, lots of arguing. Blackadder famously, you know, you've got five or six of the brightest people in the country all arguing about whether courgette is a funnier vegetable than cabbage, you know. It takes hours and hours. But actually, fortunately, the way the human mind works is we forget the bad things, you know, and only remember the nice bits. And so you just have a warm glow about them, you know, just like out of particular going to work and laughing so much you wanted to be sick, you know. I mean, there's been lots of talk over the years of, of it returning. I mean, are you open to the possibility, or do you think it's it's nice to kind of leave it and let people discover what you've done already? That is Sir Tony Robinson hoping for work at his <laughs> advanced age. Um, we we do talk about it from time to time, but the thing is, as Rowan said, we're all getting so old, you know, and um, the best idea, I think, Rowan and I like this idea, which is to do... Uh, it's like Dad's Army. They're all in the Second World War this time, and they're in a platoon of old Crocs, you know. Um, and they get a German submarine lands at the beach and kidnaps them all, and they take them to Kolditz, and they have to escape. We thought that was a pretty funny idea, but you know, the thing is, it's you know, Hugh Laurie, who was obviously a, a really important part of Blackadder, but he is, when he was doing House, he's literally the best-paid actor on television in the world. And to try and get him and Stephen Fry and, and Tony and Richard Curtis and Ben Elson, how would you get them in the same room? You know, Richard's running comic relief as well as, you know, making some of the best, funniest films around. So, and also, especially that iconic last scene, I don't think you can top that. You know, I think it's a fitting full stop. And I think, you know, sadly, let it be, move on, do something else. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice.